everybody. Uh, Matt Whip here from KPMG, speaking at the TP Mines International Conference. I have with me here uh, Judy Taylor from Imasat. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about the changing environment of transfer pricing, uh, particularly the rapid growth of it in terms of profile and its impact and what that means around the role of a transfer pricer. Um, so Judy, in your, your experience, obviously you've had a long and varied career in transfer pricing. What are the main changes you've seen in terms of the role of a transfer pricer? Well, I think, Matt, if you go back 10, even 15 years, when I started out in transfer pricing, a lot of it was around economic analysis, yep. benchmarking, documentation, producing large wads Very large, of, yeah, of TP large. files. And I think we've moved on quite a lot since that, and, and there are many different reasons for that, um, particularly as transfer pricing has become far more high profile, uh, both yeah. internally within the organisation and externally. You know, we have BEPS, uh, we have a lot of transparency measures. And I think what that has meant for us as transfer pricing professionals is we've, we've really had to, to really think a little bit more outside of the box. Okay. We've had to manage different stakeholders, whereas before perhaps we were really only managing the tax authority as the key stakeholder. Um, whereas now we have, we have the business as a key stakeholder, we have the board as a key stakeholder. You know, how do we maintain a, a stable ETR? Uh, much of that relies on transfer pricing to some, to some extent. Um, and then we have other stakeholders. We have NGOs, we have um, our, our, our media and our investor relations team who have to field questions from our stakeholders. So you know, they need to be briefed. So there's, there's a whole field of, of, of new skills um, that we've had to learn. Yeah. So moving away from almost a bit of that ivory tower technical expertise to the softer side of it, managing communications, yeah. keeping people and informed at the right level, those stakeholders. How does that come through to your everyday role? So, so what are you doing differently in your role maybe and, and how do you look differently at your team and its makeup? Well, I think for me, um, I think what I've learned over the years is, is you know, sort of negotiation skills, influencing skills. How do I influence the business to either change what they need to do yeah. or, or help them, help them give us the information to manage transfer pricing. So, so I've, I've, tried, I've had to learn a different way of, of communicating yes. with my different stakeholder groups and each stakeholder group will require a, a different level and a different type of communication you know you, you can't speak to everybody in the same language um, so, so that's what I've learned and that's now what I'm looking for in, 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 in TP professionals you know, when people are looking to skill up the group I, I don't think it's just about Picking people who have got an economics background, for example, I think what you need to look for are people who are who are very articulate and, and can get a point across in, in in layman's terms, for example. So when you're talking to your CFO, he kind of doesn't really want to know the technical bit. What he wants to know is, you know, strategically what's important, where's the risk, what's the value at risk, and what are we doing about it, in a very concise way. And so that requires a different skill set altogether. So almost when you're thinking about your team, rather than thinking about, could I put them in front of the tax authority, you're thinking, can I put them in front of the business? Absolutely, yes, absolutely, yeah. And of course, I mean, that changes also the dynamic of the role of transfer price within a firm. And, you know, there, there, are, there are risks and ops, as there are in all pieces about that. Give me your view on, you know, what's the biggest challenge about that change, but also the biggest opportunity thing that excites you most about the change in your role. I think the biggest challenge is finding the, the, the right people with those right skill sets. It's quite hard. Not everyone has all of those skills. No. Right? Yeah. Um, so, so you kind of have to take a view. Do you want someone to come in and solely focus on technical and that's all they do? Yeah. Do you want someone to come in and do all your advisory business facing role? And can you kind of grow those skills or the, or the, or the different skills in, in each of those individuals? So in a way, it's kind of how do you want to set up your team? Do you want them to be multidisciplinary? Yeah. In which case, you're going to have to provide a lot of support and, 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 and development. And development. Yeah. Or, or do you have kind of a more um, structured team in that you have technical people who purely do that and they face off against the tax authority and they, they manage your audits and, and things like that. And then you have your business advisory people who yeah. face off against the business and your CFO and the board. Um, and, and that in itself presents challenges because clearly, you know, both of those guys need to interact. The, the business guys need to understand the technical piece so they can they can kind of distill it into yeah. something that's understandable and the technical guys need to get their point across to, to the business guys. So I think there's some of the challenges really. Um, 
I think what excites me is this ever-changing environment. You just don't know where it's going to go next. You know, BEPS is, is hugely challenging for all of us, but it's, it's massively exciting at the same time. Yeah. Um, really makes you think, intellectually it makes you think. Um, you know, as well as practically, what do we do about it? So Intellectually and commercially. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of commercial interplay now. It's Absolutely. so embedded and so important. And I guess if I look at that a little bit, and if I sit there and say, ask you to put your sort of crystal ball gazing glasses on and say, what do you think the next evolution will be? Or how do you see this growing? And what's your role in the future? So what are you looking forward to? Oh, I, I'm looking Other forward to when it's all be, all be over. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the short term, medium term um, yeah. uh, kind of uh, challenges or all my expectations, I guess, are um, you know, get, getting through the whole bets thing really, getting to a point where we can look back and say we got through it, yeah. we got through it, we're clean, we've done what we needed to do, what's next? Because I don't think it's going to stop there, you know, I, I, I haven't got a magic ball, I don't know what's going to come, you know. Over the fence next, but there will be something. There will be bet too, I'm sure. Um, we don't know where Trump's going in the US. We don't know where Brexit's going. We don't know how Europe will pan out post-Brexit. So, um, you know, looking forward to what, some of, I guess some of the, the, the fallout or, or, or the impact of that and what that means for us as TP professionals. And it's kind of interesting what, and I can't remember the guy's name um, this morning. Um, Pascal? Pascal, no, no, it was the guy um, before lunch who did this great session on statistics and probability. Oh, right. okay. yes. and, and, you know, and this kind of, this concept of what's the tipping point, you know, what is the next tipping point for us? Yeah. Is, is that, that's kind of what I'm, I'm kind of looking out for and thinking, hmm, yeah, you know, let's, let's just look out for what that might be, where that might take us on TP. That kind of excites me a bit. We're going to that bit where we can see bets in the rear view mirror. It's behind us <laughs> yeah. and we can move we can on forward, yeah. to the next challenge, which there will yes. definitely be. Yes. Well, thank you very much for that. Some very, uh, very uh, insightful comments around the future. And uh, I look forward to that exciting world ahead. And uh, thank you, everybody. That's it for this one from uh, TP International.